All right, guys, uh, today we are going to hit the uh, third segment of the GT500 build. Uh, if you guys know what this is, this is an MGW Gen 2 shifter. Uh, we have the base plate, we have all the hardware, and uh, uh, shift stick, shift rod, whatever you want to call it. These are the support braces here and associated hardware, and the actual main MGW unit here. Um, so, you know, pretty much like with any Mustang, the shifting is pretty much trash. Um, SN95s were horrible. Uh, GT500s are no different. Um, basically, with the stock shifter, you'll be in gear and you'll get lots of, uh, uh, lots of back and forth play. Um, and it just doesn't feel, it doesn't feel like a nice solid shift. Um, if you guys have driven, you know, a TR6060 car, or basically any Mustang. Like I said, this is a problem across all Mustangs. Um, they just don't have that nice positive click, that positive engagement. Um, and I like a nice, solid, positive uh, click to know that I'm in the gear. Um, so this is going to help this greatly. Um, this is going to be a shit ton more support. If you guys have seen these before, it has a big base plate in the back uh, that bolts in with a, a nice... Um, Nice uh, thick plate in there to bolt in. So we'll go ahead and we'll get this stuff apart. Um, I already got the car in the air. Uh, I got the car in the air this morning to start working on it. Um, so we're going to get underneath the car. I'm going to drop the trans cross member a little bit to get it down. Uh, you'll see the dash is still partially apart from doing the radio install. Uh, but you can see here... Um, when it's in gear, you get lots, lots of back and forth. Um, I can't do this one-handed to get the knob off. But you'll see you get lots of back and forth play in gear. Um, and that's not something I like. So the gears don't feel... I mean, you get, you get a decent click going in the gear, but it's not... It's, it's just sloppy. It's not what I like. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and we'll get a little bit of data while I'm popping everything together. All right, so I have most of the uh, center console out. Um, I had to take out this panel for the radio, which I popped back in. But I believe there's just two 7mm uh, bolts there to pop out the rest of the center section um, to get to the actual shifter plate. And then there's two 13mm bolts right here and right here to break off the uh, actual shift lever. And then there is, I think there's 14s down in the base plate. Alright, to also get out the center console, there were two 10 millimeter bolts in the back there uh, that was underneath the carpet. And then, uh, like I said, those two 7 millimeters that were up there. Uh, when you're trying to get out this shift lever, uh, you want to actually hold on to the shift lever while you're cracking it. Uh, because those do have quite a bit of tension uh, when you're popping those out. So you don't want to scratch up your panels or smack and hit your nav screen or anything like that uh, so once those screws are out basically your console lifts out lift up from the back and then slide it out okay, so once your center console is out uh, you're gonna see your e-brake is exposed you can see two plugs down there uh, one is for the 12 volt for the lighter adapter one is for which is now going to be debunked since I have USB but it was for the uh, aux cable uh, you're going to see on the shifter plate there, those are actually 10 millimeter bolts to get those out uh, and 10 millimeter nuts uh, to get the top plate out. And then basically the rest of it, you're loosening from underneath the car. To get the two bolts and two nuts out of the base plate, uh, basically just pry up on the base plate and around this rubber grommet uh, or um, shield boot, whatever you want to call it, you just lift up from the bottom and slides right out. You have that. Now you're left with the open area in the tunnel uh, that is uh, going down to the shift linkage and uh, where you'll unbolt the rest uh, down underneath and, and feed the shifter through. Okay, so we're underneath the car. Um, basically we just need to drop the transmission brace uh, cross member so we can drop the transmission a little bit and get up to uh, get the shifter out. Uh, so basically you're going to pop off these two bolts on each side, which are 18s, and then you have 15s right there and right there. And um, 
I don't need a transmission jack at this point, but to get it back up, we're probably going to need the jack to get the transmission back up. But on the sides of the transmission, I'm not going to be able to show all this in the car, but uh, there's going to be some clips and, and shit up in here uh, to get the shifter out um, up on the sides above the drive shaft. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to get that on video, but there's two uh, metal clips that got to swing out, two pins that pop out, and then... Um, I think there's two uh, Allen uh, Allen key bolt to pop out up top. Two sensors on the side of the transmission you have to unplug. Um, this is, I think, the speed sensor because it feels like a magnet. You have to unbolt the 10 millimeter bolt, slide that out, and then up here is a pin uh, that you had to uh, flip up the tab, and then the pin should pretty much pull out this way. There's one on the driver's side as well. And then uh, there are uh, one hex bolt up on top of that that's got to come out where you probably have to yank down on the transmission a little bit. And then there's uh, bolts back here on the base plate uh, to pull out the base plate as well. Or the shift linkage, I'm sorry. You guys, now if you're doing this on jack stands, uh, this is not the easiest thing in the world. You will be fishing your hands pretty tight up in the tunnel. Um, so it is a little bit of a bitch, but as you can see, we got the stock shifter out. Uh, we got the stock shift linkage out. We got the brace that holds it in. Um, this is the vehicle speed sensor, I believe it is, and the uh, reverse lockout switch. Um, we have the, these are the pins uh, that hold in the arms of the uh, shifter. Uh, we have a shoulder bolt up here um, that was holding the shift linkage to the shifter. Uh, we have the bolt that goes to the shift linkage and then the two nuts to hold in the plate into the car. So everything is out. I can now start getting the MGW together. You can see everything is bare in there. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get the MGW unboxed to get the arms on and get it together. As per the MGW instructions, we went in and got some of the Dynamat, did the top side of the shaft. Um, I guess there is some kind of potential for that to rub or resonate against the bottom of the tunnel. And your side arms here that are going to bolt into the side of the um, shifter assembly um, that is going to um, bolt into the top of the transmission. I guess there is some potential for these to rub and resonate inside the tunnel. Uh, so they give you some dynamat to go ahead and uh, slip on top of that. So we're going to go ahead and go out to the car and slide this thing and start getting uh, the assembly bolted back in. I got the main MGW assembly um, up into the tunnel. Um, I did the back bolt to the shift linkage. Uh, now we're going to go ahead and put the arms on and go ahead and use these pins, uh, the factory pins, to get the arms back on the transmission. And then uh, we'll bolt the arms into the back of the shifter assembly. So if you guys can see, we got the side arms hooked up. Uh, now all we need to do is put the sensors back in and uh, bolt on the back support piece um, at the back of the shifter. Okay, I got the uh, arms bolted up to the transmission. We got four bolts that go uh, from the other side of the arms into the shifter unit. Uh, we got some red Loctite from MGW. Just put some Loctite on those. Uh, those are 13 millimeter uh, bolt heads and those go into the side of the shifter assembly. So the arms are bolted on the shifter. Um, basically the last thing to do is to do the mount on those two uh, studs coming out there. Uh, that's where you're gonna do your solid mount. And then uh, everything is basically just finishing up the top plate uh, within the car. All right, so I installed the Dynamat uh, going back into the tunnel to help with vibrations. We got the back piece uh, snugged, just finger snugged. Uh, side brackets, finger snugged. Now everything else is pretty much going uh, from the top of the car. Uh, actually, I lie. We need to get the uh, transmission brace up, so I'm going to jack up the transmission a little bit and uh, get everything pushed up towards the tunnel. Once this is back on, then everything else is working from the top of the car. Now we're at the part where we can finally kind of see something interesting. Now you can see the MGW coming together. So I'm um, just gonna get these factory nuts and bolts out so we can get the top plates in. And 
and the sound deadening material. Um, I always like to put the nuts and bolts back into place um, <coughs> when I'm working. That way when I come back to it, I remember what was supposed to go there. So um, that's just how I do things. If you don't want to do it that way, that's fine. But um, it helps me remember where shit's got to go. So when you put the gasket on, you're going to see one bolt hole is a little bit lower than the others. That's going to go on the passenger side. And you're going to see, voila, that's going to pop right into place. Uh, next thing you would do is grab the top plate. And again, that should pop into place. Um, it's going to be hard to do it with holding the camera. But this rubber boot is supposed to stretch over the gold piece. GW says to use the OEM hardware. Um, the only difference is you were going to use the flat washer and lock washer on all these just to uh, uh, get a wider uh, disbursement of the pr pressure. Uh, these are all 10 millimeters. When you tighten these down, uh, you want to be able to see that Dynamat uh, starting to spread out. So you don't want to go crazy tight, but you want it to the point where uh, starting to feel snug and you start seeing some of that oozing out. Here's the MGW installed nice and pretty. Everything is nice and sealed. Um, they really go out of their way to uh, make sure that everything is sealed from the cabin as far as noise, uh, any fumes, anything like that. Uh, last thing to do is to get this uh, top foam piece on. Um, and there should be some screw holes in here. And that pops on. And the bolt should pop through there, and then from there, just putting the dash back together. Now's the farm part where you actually get to put the shifter shaft on and get to feel what your shifter is going to feel like. So, you want to make sure the flat washer goes first, then the lock washer, then the uh, jam nut. Actually, I have my shift knob in here yet, but uh, so far the I mean, it'll take some getting used to, but um, the gate's a little bit different without having a shift knob on here. Um, it doesn't seem like it's going into reverse. I'm not sure if it's because of the reverse lockout switch needs to reset uh, since I had it out and took power from it. Um, but yeah, so far it feels pretty good. Uh, next thing is to get this all back together and get it out for a test drive. All right, so we can see we got the dash back together. Um, everything is looking good. I uh, started the car up quick up on jack stands and reverse goes in fine. Uh, so I just need to build pressure again or, or uh, resense the uh, reverse lockout switch. So everything feels good. I put the stock shifter on just to feel it, um, but I do have a uh, MGW uh, cylindrical gripper coming in, so I can't wait for that to come in. Uh, double din is done from you guys uh, what you can see from the last video um, we got the end gauge done um, I just got the car titled yesterday and or not yesterday uh, today's Saturday so on Thursday night got the car titled uh, paid my out-of-state taxes on the car got a plate on it we're ready to rock and roll so I'm gonna take the car if we don't get any snow this week or next week uh, if we don't get any snow next week I'm gonna take the car to get inspected get emissioned and then I'm going to rip off the uh, catted Cook's pipe, put my uh, off-road uh, Cook's pipe on it. And we're going to probably go to set of, uh, since I already got 20s on it, um, I'm kind of watching budget a little bit because I did just dump a shit ton of money in this car. Um, so I'm just going to throw a set of nt 5 rs on it, maybe uh, some ET Street SSs on the 20s. Let it eat for a little bit until I can find a 17-inch package or a 15-inch package uh, that I want to go to the track with. But ideally, um, if I can let it eat a little bit on uh, some 20-inch drag radials, I'm cool with that for a little bit. I just know I'm not going to be able to do it on these tires. Um, so, sorry if I kind of breeze through the install. You guys bitch that the videos are too long. So, I'm only trying to get little snippets here and there of the process. Uh, if you guys have any questions about the process, anything that I missed or that you want touched on um, that isn't clear, the MGW instructions or whatever, uh, you know, feel free to reach out to me. Um, post down in the comments. Let me know um, if you guys uh, have any ideas for any new content for the car. Let me know. 
Um, but otherwise, once it's starting to get warmed up, we're going to get this thing on the streets and uh, hopefully we're going to start fucking some people up on the streets with this thing. So uh, stay tuned for the next set of videos on this and uh, next ones you guys see will probably be uh, out in the streets romping around. So we'll catch you guys on the next one.